way. But it's Satan's self wanting his own way by us. We combine Satan's self. Now, we didn't know that. Now, what's the consequence? Here's our trouble. We come into Christian life, we think, I hear better. Why do I have jealousy? Why do I hate? Why do I lust? Why do I get angry? Why haven't I more peace? Why have I more peace? Aye, 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 aye. As if this should be changed, this is never went wrong. It was never, it was stolen property. It's God's beautiful property, misused it. There was a, always was a beautiful property. Your appetite factors were always beautiful. They were misused by Satan. And you thought it was you, he kidded you. He made it think it was you. And then you condemn yourself. There I am jealous again. There I am lusting again. There I am, what's wrong with me? And so we have this false teaching. That's got a, as if there are two natures. But there are, there are no two human natures. There are two divine natures. Ephesians 2 says, when you walked in the old life, according to the course of this world, called the prince of the power there, the old fallen, the power there, the spirit of the you, there he is, Satan. In those days, spirit, he called the spirit uh, uh, that, that, that worked in children's disobedience, and were by nature children of wrath. You express the nature of your father, children of wrath. Now when you're saved, says Peter, we're partakers of the divine nature, the divine nature, not us, that's Jesus' nature. We never had one. Now you didn't know that. Now you see, that's where we're tangled up. Why did I say, I must have more love? I thought how I must be more loving. I must have more power. I must have more peace. I must be less judgmental. I must have must less conquered by the lust of the flesh. I must be improved. I'm all wrong. You, I'm a beautiful. Uh, only, see, when you don't know who you are, when you don't know that Jesus Christ has taken you over, and he lives in you, and Satan's out, Satan plays his games on you, uh, because you think you should be better, that's self-effort is Satan. That tries you better is Satan. Self after Satan. Satan is the God of independent self. And I wish I was so. so. I, that's Satan. Because he's got you. Self effort means you're in his hands and he expresses himself through you. And you can't get out of it. Now, the person who learned that and put it right was Paul in a great chapter called Romans 7. It's a chapter of. Uh, it's really where we're, elude, we're in an illusion. In Romans 7 says this Paul says, I'm a new man now. He said, I delight the law of God, the human man. Paul, the old law worker, he got saved. Here he was. I love God now. I want to please God, like when you prayed. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be right. I delight the law of God. He says that. Now he says, what's wrong with me? He says, I found a commandment which bothered me. It was a, an inside commandment. I shouldn't covet. Covet, you shouldn't have lust. You shouldn't have inner desires, wrong, wrong desires. He says, the commandment says, I shouldn't have wrong desires. I don't want them. I belong to Jesus, I'm full of them. Why do I have these wrong desires and lusts when I don't want them? I'm like two people. I'm like a new creature in Christ, all things are new things are away, I've got the power of Christ operating, I know that. And you hear the other old things in me too. Why am I two? And then he saw it. Oh, he says, I see. That wasn't me. That sin dwelling in me. A false invader got into the fall, called sin or Satan. Sin just a case of sin, 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 sin. In me. It's this person expressing his lust by me. Those covetousnesses I've got wasn't mine at all. He was using my appetite to express his desires to without me at all. Now he began to face, he says, uh, he began to find his liberation. Yeah, I don't go around condemning myself. It's, it's I'm managed by the God in me. Which God? Which God? Which God? Now, this is the final great lesson Paul has. So it's all I suppose I can say this afternoon. The final great lesson Paul t t uh, learned and taught us. He said, I found there's more in the cross of Christ than I thought there was. I found there are two operations in the cross of Christ, not one. That's why we have in the Holy Communion the, 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 the cup representing the shed blood and the bread representing the blood by two, not one. Body and blood. Why? Because uh, two things happened at Calvary by Christ's shed blood and by his crucified body. Now, all of us here know the blood. We know because the shed blood meant he did die in our part, went to hell on our behalf, hell couldn't hold him, rose up again, so our road to hell is closed forever by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, dying and, and rising on our behalf. That's out. That's taking our sins away. Now Paul says, watch that body. Get a little closer. He says, when you first come to Christ, uh, you're here, you're a sinner. You see Christ up there, died for you. Praise God, praise God. You, you don't see yourself there. You say, he died for me, praise God, because he died, I haven't got to go to hell and so on. You put your trust in that crucified Christ. Now Paul says, come nearer. It's, it, it, it's in the, it's, it best is in the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. He says, don't you know, if he died for you, he represented you. That body was your body. That body represented all bodies. 
He, he, he represented you when he hung there. You were there. And so Paul said, don't you, don't you judge? If one died for all, all hung there dead. Now you hang there. Now Paul says, what's the point of your body? It's the agency for containing the spirit. The body, our appetites, factors, express our self, self inside. Inside you, you've got a deity, a false deity. You've got the self of Satan operating by you, inside you, in your fallen condition. You're expressing Satan. All those lusts and things where Satan expressing himself by you. So you, you really were expressor of sin, expressor of Satan. Now he says, watch what, the, what, what uh, that body on the cross. Uh, hanging there, and that was your body, your body. And then he made this, this tremendous statement. Uh, in, it's the last verse of that chapter. It says, for God, God made his son to be sin for us who knew the sin. Be sin, made him sin. How can you make Jesus Christ sin? Now, he's, he bore our sins, that's what his sins. His blood, he bore our sins, he meant his sins. He bore the penalty, he meant his sins. Now, they were his sins. He's made sin. Then he bore our sins, that he died, that's wonderful. But he's made sin. How could you say that by sin? Because you expressed sin in Satan. Sin is the spirit of Satan. The human body expresses the, the spirit in it. And the spirit, it's the sin and spirit you're expressing. So that body expresses sin. So in God's sight, this holy body, representing our body, expresses the spirit of error, which has expressed itself through us. Now what happens when the body dies? Out goes the spirit. When the body dies, out goes the spirit. And you don't bury a body. In best spirit, you bury a body. And so that precious body is buried, no spirit. Then Paul said in Romans 6, that's why I say he died to sin. He died for our sins, paid the penalty for our sins out there. Died to sin, he died to be controlled by sin. Sin is the spirit, it's the sin of Satan, it's the quality of Satan, the spirit of self happiness. He died to this being, died, it's out from him. When your body dies, I've got the spirit, that went out. And it said in the resurrection two years later, in came a new spirit. Now in that same body, our body, now has the spirit of Christ in him. No two spirits, no two natures, one nature. Out is the nature, Satan expressing his self-getting nature, self-seeking nature by us. In comes the one who expresses his self-giving nature by us. And in the Trinity is meeting the meditation of his own beloved son, his word. And then through the word, who operates the word, let there be, let there be, come the, come the further ones, the further sons, 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 who also can operate their word. And the, his, the only means his manifestation, he has to uh, re-manifest himself by person forms. And so when his own son, as we saw in the previous session, when his own son, in a sense, laid aside his deity, and became son of man. And he very rarely would, would say son of God, because he wanted to point the point, he's son of man, he's one of you. When challenged, of course, he did say, in fact, he died because he said he's son of God. But he loved to say he's son of man. Uh, and as son of man, he said, now, this is what man is. How do I do mighty things? They, they, they said to him, you do mighty things. How, oh, I don't do a thing. I do what I, father, my, what I see my father do. I don't say a thing. I say, what I hear my father say. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, of course, externally, you couldn't understand. That, that day, internal hadn't come, because the Spirit hadn't come. Of course, a few through history knew, but only after Pentecost did the Spirit come in the universal sense for those who receive him. So he couldn't use spiritual terms too much. But right at the, at the, at the, at the summer table where he was going to leave them, when he was going to rise and then come again in the Spirit, and that's the chapter where he said the Holy Spirit's going to come with you. Then he said, oh, he said, you've got it all wrong. He said, you think the Father, as I said to which he is up there, that's not the point. They said, sure, the Father, if you see me, you see the Father, because the Son uh, operates, he's really being operated. He functions, he's, he's managed, he's really being managed. I appear to manage my life. I appear to say, say so. I am the Lamb. I am the way, I am the truth. But really, I'm expressing him. I'm um, just a means, a means by which he expresses himself. If you see me, you see the Father. I don't do things by myself, I do what I see the Father doing. I don't speak words by myself, I speak what the Father saying. So here's the pattern man. And therefore, if that's a pattern man, you can't be a satisfied man unless you're, you're part of the pattern. And the pattern means, therefore, that you are as conscious as he is, you're not you. You're the living deity. John says, if God dwells in you. 
Paul says, Christ dwells in you. 